she's going to stop and she's going to get used to just putting her feet on that green block first. So that way she's head knows there's a comfortable way of falling, something I'm used to. Something that just in case if I get stuck or messed up or scared, I can, I'm sick. Okay, so you do that again a couple times. Okay, so it's like, oh, okay. And then feet down on the green block. Then the next step would be from here, kick back up to handstand and fall on your back. And then you assist them on my guy. Handstand flat back. So it's just teaching them, because I always like, especially on the I want to make sure they feel comfortable that there's a safe way to get out of it, um, especially if I'm so I kick up again, do that same thing again. And then they can almost start to do this by themselves. And they kick up the handstand. Flat. And All right. what is the skill for that? It's going to, I'll show you in a second. Oh. This actually turns into a pirouette off oh. the beam. Um, like a turn off the beam. But it's only at the high beam. We don't use, we can do it on the low beam. But this is the kind of the drill for that. Okay, hang on. Then you say, okay, now, we're going, I'm going to help you. We're not going to touch the green block at all. Okay. Okay. Which you, she knows how to do. But. So then I'm going to help her and then just make sure she falls tight. And what you're going to run into with this is kids will start to rush it and so they'll start to fall into you, which is why it's good to be kind of on this side of them. And so you'll be able to grab them and hold them from so falling. Yeah. I noticed that for that, for just a second, she was kind of like, like her head was back mm -hmm. while she was. So how, how would I stop someone from hitting their head? Hitting their head? Okay, go do that. Take your head way out. Head way out. Head away. Yeah. Yeah, do that. So as we're, we're coming down, what I would do for her is I would still hold her and try and get as much weight in and I'd be like, oh no, tuck your head in, tuck your head in, tuck your head in, and roll out. Okay. So over the grass. So instead of falling flat back, you do just a forward roll. So, so you're going to do a forward roll. And then develop that and then that would teach the head. And, and, and on this dismount, it's a tricky, it, it's actually a pretty hard dismount, because you initially you don't want their head to be all the way in, because there's a lot of kids who bury their head and right away just fall really fast. So you actually want them to be looking at their thumbs on the beam at first, holding it, and then as they start to peer away, it's kind of a little bit of the head as they come off. And so as they flat back, it's, a, it's kind of a neutral, kind of neutral. But if there's if a kid who's like this, I would say, yeah, overcorrect and say, do a forward roll. <laughs> so that could be also another way to meet it instead of doing flat back, just do a forward roll. Um, like a cheese. Like a cheese, exactly. So something they're used to rolling. And then eventually you don't even need to spot it, you can just kind of spot to the side. Now this is pretty intense and you just let them fall over and over again, do it one more. And then fall. Okay, then from there, what I usually do the next step for me, this block's going to be too big. Let me see how I can set this up. Well, as much as you can. Like, it, it's good to have control. At least have some control so it's not such a fast fall. Because what happens if they're not able to control the handstand a little bit is they, when they start to move into the pirouette, they fall into the beam really right. So that's that problem you're saying. Like, this is because the kid doesn't have a good control of the handstand. So if the kid's falling into the beam on the pirouetting this round, I would immediately take them back to the next. Like, do this, I'm not going to have It's two seconds so, that they have to hold it for right? level one second five. for level one. And then, so I always so they count to two. Because yeah, as long as you go to two, they'll be fine. They won't get to that two. But head for safety, too. Right? Yeah. Control the hands. So there's a couple of different ways. So it's some, there's nothing here. But, um, sometimes the way I teach the, the pure wedding just now is right here. And so I want them to know it's not just a carbon block. And so what I do is I actually teach them to make sure they're doing a handstand. So do a handstand. Nice one. Yeah. Do a handstand. Right there. And I spot them the same way. And then I'm going to say, now take this hand. But usually there's like a block or something. Oh. And there's a But usually, but I don't have anything. Like if there's a panel mat, I'd sneak a panel mat here. And they'd pirouette and put their hand on the panel mat. So they're back in a handstand and control. So try that. So that way they're getting used to. And this, this, if you teach it this way, instead of trying to have them straight, go straight from the side, kick into it, it actually teaches them that it's a handstand turn versus a woof over the beam. Because that's what they eventually do if, they, if you rush it. So that's that step. And then the next step after that is doing the same thing from this kick. So you're going to go through all the steps, same thing, and then kick up the hands and 
stop. Then you're going to say, now pirouette to the mat and put your feet down. Feet or knees, usually it's reasonable in that. So that's kind of how you teach that and go through all those steps before you ever get to the high. Okay. <laughs>